cool for solidarity. This one. Let's go. I like your bouquet of flowers. Thank you. A friend of mine gave it to me. So I was talking to a friend about this. We were talking about how it's like, you know, if you're a guy and another guy gives you flowers, wouldn't you be happy about that? And then, so I bought him flowers. And he was oh. like, oh, I actually am pretty happy about that. <laughs> and then he bought me flowers. Oh. And were you happy about that? I am, yeah. Yeah, so if a guy buys you flowers, yeah. you know. And then so he buys them back for you and then you go, I'm allergic. Oh, you got it? Yeah, sorry. Just thought. Yeah, I think everything is going. Mm hmm. I'm gonna double check this just to make sure. This is the first time you've done a fire in here? No, I, I so normally I roast marshmallows. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but I have ran out of marshmallows. Gotcha. Oh, damn. Um, just hopefully, I was, yeah, okay, it looks like good. I was just worried about like fumes or smoke or anything. Okay. This burns clean. And don't be afraid. Okay. That it's rubbing alcohol. Yeah. Because uh, it, it is sketchy that it is rubbing alcohol. Mm -hmm. but I'm by the door, so I, I have a fire yeah, escape. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be fine. <laughs> Wait, you just light the alcohol on fire? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Kind <laughs> of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a fire extinguisher somewhere over there. Somewhere over there. <laughs> here, wait. Oh, just pull the hair back a little bit. <laughs> so this pot is encased. Oh, that goes over top. Yeah. And snuff it out. I need to trim my brows, so maybe this will help. <laughs> Your eyebrows are gonna get trimmed, and I'm gonna shave. It's the best I can do, I think. Okay, so. Ooh. That's nice. pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Yeah, you yeah. want one now? Uh huh. You want they're, one? they're ninety dollars on do Amazon. Do I want one? Oh. They're really cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, I'll put this. Wow, it burns with that pretty fast too. Look at that go. Yeah, it takes about forty-five minutes. To wow. Go the entire thing. Um, I think we're recording on all fronts right now, cool. and now Katie's here. Ooh. Start. You can have Thank you. Are Stay you safe. Are you giving it to me? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna. Uh, I will cherish this always. <laughs> so I just bought new ones. Okay, cool. Now I'm going with something. Stay safe. Nice. Um, <laughs> Super friend. The way I usually start this is so. This is called the Sketchy Van Podcast, mm -hmm. and okay. I talk to a lot of like educators and artists and people that work in entertainment. Okay. And the goal of it is not to talk about technique or how to get a job or okay, you know, how to like paint better anatomy or whatever. It's like. The, the real reason I want to do all this stuff is like more about the why of art. It's like, mm, okay. you, know, you guys have these jobs that people want and you know, work on these cool things. Mm -hmm. um, I was telling Katie about this, but it's like, you have these, in a sense, a dream job, but it's mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. I suspect it's not completely fulfilling. You know, there are things mm -hmm. that you might like, you know, might change or you might actually like, you might tell students like, oh, focus more on your own life rather than like rushing to get into a position Mm -hmm. dream job you know yeah life's not all about the career yeah yeah and i feel like in our culture it has become a big thing in people's mm -hmm. lives is you know getting a degree getting a, yeah. a, a job you know be able to take care of yourself obviously mm -hmm. um and yeah again just trying to answer the question of like why do you do all this stuff in the first place you know beyond mm -hmm. just like you know getting the cool job yeah mm -hmm. um, do you want to start off why i draw just in general? Well, I just, guess so. It's like, um, because I, I mean, I see drawing is really hard, you yeah. know? It's like not apparent to me that like- It's a craft. Could, it's a craft. Well, and mm -hmm. it's like, you can either be an investment banker and make a ton of money just objectively, right? Or, you know- Or if you're successful as an yeah, investment yeah, banker. Successful, right? <laughs> well, I guess the, the higher end of investment banking is way higher than the higher end of art, at least in terms of money, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I guess you are the higher end of art, you know, as well, far as like- yeah, yeah, I mean, you guys are working skills. on... We're yeah, working yeah. professionals. Yeah. We're working yeah. professionals in skills and all that kind of stuff. And um, and obviously, it's like you're not making $500 million a year off mm -hmm. investment making mm -hmm. stuff. And, like, I, I guess the reason that I say that, it's like, you, you actually can't force yourself to care about investment banking, you know? Like, no matter how hard you try, no matter how awesome it would be to uh -huh. work, be worth $50 trillion, mm -hmm. you can't actually force yourself to do that. So there's something you get from doing art that is objectively... Or subjectively more meaningful that you cannot get for money you know really um, interesting I, I think so right it's like i don't know like what are there people who like that's their passion is investment bank oh, there oh, for, are oh, for there sure are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah people who like they love every second of it yeah you know? i don't know sometimes i think that's that can be a bit of a dangerous thought 
yeah. um, that art uh, is somehow more fulfilling for like your soul yeah. than other jobs. I think sometimes that drives people to make that as an excuse. Is like, you know, I come from, we were talking earlier, Michigan. Yeah. And like one of my first jobs there was working at a factory. You know, it was like a raisin dumper, like a cereal factory. And there's a lot of people, and you see a lot of blue collar jobs there. Right. And there is this over, like overall idea of like, oh, well, you who are like working to be an artist, you're going to be fulfilled. Yep. You're going to, this is like ticking off a box that I don't get to tick. Right. And mm-hmm. a lot of times people will also then draw the conclusion that that is somehow uh, in place of more money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. you're not an investment. Investment bankers don't have fun. Right. Therefore, they get all the money. Absolutely. But you're fulfilled. So right. why don't you just draw this for free? You love it. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Well, and I think part of the payment of being an artist is actually being able to do it, you know? And I think, mm. um, you know, that sucks because art is not fun all the time. You know, mm-hmm. I, like mm-hmm. you, working in animation, I'd imagine a lot of it is tedious work. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. stuff yeah. that's not glamorous. It can even be physically, sexy. physically demanding. Like uh, on your wrists. A lot stuff. of people have tendinitis. Yeah, Some, yeah, yeah. Sometimes people will look at a character's line and be like, "That's tendinitis." <laughs> right, right, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a pure. Yeah. yeah, they have a term called line mileage. Line yeah, you know, you see characters a lot of line mileage, and you just. You know, for someone like an animator who draws like every other frame for something, you just dread giving them a character like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I admire it, obviously. Like, I really like art and really like that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. But there is a price to pay for getting so into something that you, like, you know, tinnitus and back problems are very common. Mm-hmm. In yeah. The yeah. Industry. There's a, there is a, a yeah, yeah. physical yeah, yeah. requirement to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, it's not quite like to the degree of like an athlete, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Someone who's like they gotta make their money by the time they're twenty two before their body explodes. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I guess it's like um, I'm trying to identify the meaning behind art in general. It's like mm. like I, I mean, I was thinking about this the other day where it's like you like the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Mm-hmm. The land that that's on is worth like a trillion dollars, right? Mm-hmm. And all of the mu- paintings in there are worth an incredible amount of money. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was talking to a friend, it's like what's the ethical uh like there's an ethical problem there where it's like you could have spent that money building roads or building hospitals or mm-hmm. more, but instead we built it building a giant building that holds paintings, you know, mm-hmm. which is objective. Yeah. Like objectively, it's like oil on canvas. And and to be fair, like its value has increased since the day they built it. Yeah. Right. Like it wasn't built worth billions, billions of dollars. Yeah, it yeah. was. It started out modestly, probably right. with a lot of investment in it. Yeah. Um, and then made its way to. Yeah. what a risk value is which then I assume means there's some sort of value we place on art mm-hmm. yeah. well uh, uplifts you you know what uplifts you feels good yeah 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 I mean it, feels it's good a, <laughs> a, a, art's, a, art's sick dude yeah. I, I dedicate my life to it but it's like a, uh-huh. I, I think so much of it is um, like I, I, I mean this more cynical side of me it's, it's like it's at the detriment of my own life to a degree mm-hmm. it's like I'm living in this van like mm-hmm. this whole thing is like an art project like I'm homeless, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm com- com- uncomfortable all the time. And I'm curious, like, why did I choose this mm-hmm. instead of, like, again, being an investment banker? Why did mm-hmm. I choose this instead of, mm-hmm. like, I actually have no choice in the matter. Like, I would way rather do this than, you know, be in an office there's a, with a, spreadsheets. You know? Yeah, there's, like, a predilection for it. There are yeah. a, a mm-hmm. predetermined... Lizard brain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of us talk about how, you know, we get itchy or antsy after a while mm-hmm. when you take yeah. like a long hiatus or a break you feels for me i don't know about everyone but like for me I, I, it feels almost suffocating if i don't draw for mm-hmm. a certain yeah. extended period of time um art, art is what happens when what the pain of not creating exceeds yeah. the pain of creating <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Right. um yeah i i think it's also just a way to turn off your brain sometimes yeah, yeah. or to focus on very specific problems right. um for me i i have a bit of anxiety not not too bad but um you know you, again you get really antsy yeah. and i i'm constantly trying to keep my brain busy and yeah. do stuff and when you're drawing you're not thinking about you know other stuff so Absolutely. i think um i don't know idle brain is a devil's playground and i don't yeah. want to i don't i'd rather be drawing than navel gazing and right i guess um because there there might be a you know in my brain there might be a little bit of a predisposition for negativity right. but i found i can curtail that by keeping busy absolutely so i think there's something there for that's just very personal though well um, I, 
I think per, I personally think that there's a deeply spiritual element to making art. Like, mm. cause I mean, when you're making art, you're again, you're not doing it with the expectation of making a ton of money. And also mm. to make a great piece of art, there's a ton of like ego killing you have to do. It's like, mm. you know, you have to be okay and intentionally make a stroke and you have to make that stroke considering everything else that's going to come after that mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. anatomy and perspective, you know, proportion, all that stuff. And you really can't be thinking about, uh, so I have to restart these cameras no worries. constantly, but, uh, uh, you really can't be thinking of, you know, uh, family stuff or job stuff or money stuff, or relationship stuff when you're doing a drawing, because you have to be in the moment. And if you're not mm. in the moment, you're going to lose the, uh, I guess the success of the drawing, I think. Mm. Maybe. I don't know. I think, I think there's a degree of that. I think, um, I think when you're professional, like, um, you're slowly raising your Qualifier. bottom, your bottom, like floor your 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 skill floor right yeah, yeah. so even if i just had the worst day of my entire life i'll still draw a better out card than most people in the world right um, it's part of being a professional yeah so i think there's and and you know what with uh all this work from home and all last year's like we, there was a freeze you know and, yeah. mm -hmm. and i wasn't even right. here but i was still pretty stressed out about it because my friends were going through it and right. you know my apartment mm -hmm. was here but it's still like i, I may not be, do the best right. animation today but yeah um, there, yeah, sometimes, sometimes you put your heart into it and then sometimes it's like, well, gotta get this model sheet done and... Yeah, yeah. That's what separates you from, like, a hobbyist. Yeah. You know, comedians talk about that all the time. They'll say, like, anyone can be funny. Mm -hmm. Um, but they'll say, like, if I'm having a bad day, you know, let's say my wife gave me divorce papers, <laughs> it's raining, I ruined a suit, I can still go into a comedy club and kill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I'm a professional. And that's Absolutely. really what the dividing thing is between, like, hobbyist and professional mm -hmm. in terms of yeah, yeah. Uh, art. Yeah, you might not have the best drawing or the best show, mm -hmm. but... Yeah. yeah, you do. You do have a bit of a, a skill floor. I guess. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and I feel like that's um, a that's part of the non. That's actually most of it, right? I'd imagine, and I think it's like that's part of the non glamorous side of art. Is like you have to do it even though you don't want to. You, know, you have to mm -hmm. do it even though you might be having a bad day. You might be sick. You know, mm -hmm. you have to find the pleasures in it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know? absolutely. And um, I think that that again uh, is part of the reason why I'm, I guess, skeptical of doing it professionally myself is because mm -hmm. you have to like let go of yourself mm -hmm. in order to get the project done you have to get the character sheet out or mm -hmm. you have to get the animation out or you something. have to be willing to do that if, mm -hmm. if you're a professional animator and you're working for like a project that maybe you don't believe in right but mm -hmm. like there there is a transaction happening and it's mm -hmm. that hourly rate i yeah. mean um, you determine what you know what you're willing to go for for that um but like that is something that every professional artist has to reconcile mm -hmm. with absolutely and yeah and you have this amazing artists you see who want to get into it because they think that being a professional artist is somehow make you a better artist yeah. and like yes you are introduced to like mm -hmm. you know like we work together I think you're an amazing artist I've learned tons from you know <laughs> yeah being you Sam like everybody yeah it's so you learn a lot from your, from it's your huge mm -hmm. um, but like that doesn't mean that someone who just does it for themselves has any reason to be lesser than absolutely mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Well, again, going back to our culture, having this hustle thing of like, you have to monetize your hobbies. You have mm -hmm. to be a professional, you know, or it's less valuable. And I think it's hard to escape that. And, um, there's also a desire to make money at any cost. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. There, there, there's lots of reasons for it. <laughs> well, I, um, I guess it's, uh, um, I've been surprised by how little I've been able to live with in the van. Like mm -hmm. I live a very minimalistic. I, I, mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. I don't want to do this for much longer, but mm -hmm. I've been like, this is something I could do for years if I really had to. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's um, like when it comes to making a ton of money, when it comes to games or anything, it's like, mm -hmm. um, or you know, working as an artist, it's like, um, you know, somebody might do something that they don't want to do in order to like just have things, you know, mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. objects that. You know. And if you grow up as an artist, you have a skill set that you might be able to use to get that yeah, yeah. that money. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's it's some a lot of people. It's like an their immediate avenue. Right. right. Yeah. Well, and I, I guess even going beyond the pay rate as well, it's like when you're on a project, you have responsibility. You mm -hmm. know, even if it's not something you care about, you have responsibility mm -hmm. to the people you're working with, even if you don't like them. Hundred you know? percent. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. You know, it's like you might not believe in the product, but like. If you don't do that thing, then somebody might not be able to feed their family, you know, mm -hmm. and it becomes way more meaningful than just the paycheck, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I think there is something like very, 
uh, important about that in people's lives. It's like mm-hmm. being able to find meaning in things that like, like the thing that I've, I've realized is, is it doesn't really matter what you do. Like you could be somebody who's a janitor or somebody who makes like concrete fireplaces that mm-hmm. fit in vans. I love that thing. It's, mm-hmm. it's amazing. Don't touch it by the way. It's mm-hmm. incredibly hot. Okay. Oh my God, it's like a little pizza it. oven. It's not super hot yet, but it will be hot at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, you can find an incredible amount of meaning in anything, and it's like it doesn't matter what you're doing specifically. It matters how well you do it. You mm-hmm. know? Like you, you can do it super resentfully, and you know, show up to work and be like, I hate, you know, working at McDonald's. Mm-hmm. Or you can show up and be like, This is awesome. Let's mm-hmm. like do it well. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, and then that elevates everyone. Every because your attitude is good, you know. It's true. And then that mm-hmm. attitude might. I don't know if I'd put that to McDonald's, though. Well, I guess uh, I, I, it, it's probably a bad... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. my, um, my grandpa, he... Um, so there's there's two, I think, philosophies. There's like, you know, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life, which is a lie, but... Mm-hmm. And then there's also... Um, Dad told me the same thing. You know, do, uh, do what makes money and then go home and fly airplanes. So. Yeah, yeah. Right. Or, you know, build your own airplane and get yeah. your fulfillment that way. Do you want to um, do. Yeah, I think... Um, I think I'm sort of able to do both, yeah. luckily, um, because it is work, but it's work that I feel like I can s- constantly improve at and then go do my own personal self, which I should do, but I don't. Yeah, there's, so. there's the intellectual <laughs> um, element to it when you're... Challenges your brain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, like, like, like just to working in a professional environment, the, you know... I care about art and animation also from the standpoint of just knowing more about it. It's, mm-hmm. it's a field that I already have a level of understanding that I know more about the things that I don't know, mm-hmm. if that makes any sense. Yeah. And so it provides me an avenue in which to explore that. Right. Um, and mm-hmm. there's that's a big draw. It's just like, I didn't know this. I want to know more about this. And mm-hmm. like, I'm already in so deep and like, there's a, just that next horizon, right. mm-hmm. you know? Absolutely. Well, I feel like that's the fun part about art it's not necessarily doing the things that you already know it's about challenging yourself and Mm -hmm. overcoming Mm -hmm. those challenges you know Mm -hmm. thinking about it that way it's like the idea of working in a studio sounds amazing because it's not about the money at all it's about like being around people who can teach you things and Mm -hmm. that you can provide value for Mm -hmm. and that is like the ideal scenario it's like you're in a community of people that you all trust and you Mm -hmm. all Mm -hmm. elevate each other and he cooks sometimes Mm -hmm. yeah 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 I I, I heard heard about the dumplings and stuff oh yeah (laughs) Yeah, yeah. they're so good Patrick thank you I need to make more of them Uh, if you had some I would totally I've got some frozen okay Um, I don't the basil pesto is gone but yeah that was a good part yeah Yeah. well they're both good yeah nice Mm -hmm. Um, but I I don't know I think it's uh, incredibly like Again, I, I can I can be kind of a nihilist sometimes. Mm-hmm. I can be kind of a depressed, sad sack, mm-hmm. you know. And I think it's like these kind of things, like talking to more people, is always making me like, oh, I should just not do that. <laughs> it's like everyone's awesome. It's like you can, you know, find meaning out of making anime and soup dump and dump dumplings. Mm-hmm. And have that be a perfectly mm-hmm. like amazing life, you mm-hmm. know. And it doesn't have to be the life that you know your parents or community thrust upon mm-hmm. you. You can choose mm-hmm. what you want to do, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of pressure, I guess, to you know get your degree or or go into other oh, things. Oh Jesus! But yeah, I, I um, <laughs> I'm lucky that I didn't. You know, my parents were like, "Go study art, Katie. The world doesn't need more investment bankers. The world yeah. needs more art." You know, that was <laughs> my, my parents, um, and I was very you know blessed about that. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I guess I'm just really lucky that I'm able to grow while also having hobbies. But I think that. The best part of the studio job is hands down the people yeah. that I work with. Right. You get I think Powerhouse is almost unique in that mm-hmm. category. There's a lot of great studios, but I don't know. Powerhouse is mm-hmm. something special. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, it's it's like I, you know, part of my lizard brain lights up when I get to draw anime boys too. So. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, something <laughs> to pay attention to. See, there's a there's a lot of like 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 working with like. Uh, uh, peers in your field getting paid for it like uh-huh. drawing cute anime boys there's a little bit of like two birds one stone kind of yeah, going yeah. on uh-huh. absolutely but sometimes okay yeah. the the main issue is that sometimes if I am tired or I don't want to work or my wrist hurts or I have to pull a late night then it's like why am I being so ungrateful about this right there's there's guilt hundreds of people right. Right. who would do anything for this job and here right. I am complaining that I have to, you know, draw eyelashes on this model sheet. Like, well, I, I think, uh, so th- there's a guilt about, th- there's even a guilt about 
like feeling bad sometimes. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think that's a danger of being in a job you really like because you're like, oh man, I don't want to make another thing that I really love doing. And so many people would love to do mm-hmm. this, but I think it's okay to not want to do that all the time, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that's, that's why I won't work weekends anymore. Well, mm-hmm. I, I think that's good, you know? I think it's good to draw boundaries. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think it's true that people would probably want your job, but mm-hmm. it's also like, mm-hmm. you know, you're an yes. individual, you know, and it's like you have yourself to think about. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, the job you know, should be a thing that services your life versus you serving the job, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, it's like, you know, I'm going to do my job the way I'm going to do it, and I'm confident in my own abilities. And if they want my job, then I'm, I'm willing to give them advice on how they can get here. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and help them out. Um, and that's, you know, that I don't know, that's as far as I take it. I, I, I try to be as honest as I can about not just my faults and my failures, but also mm-hmm. my victories. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and I feel like a lot of people tend to do one or the other, right? Mm-hmm. And and that leads to a lot of. I think in art it's more people are honest with their failures, and then you try to compliment yeah. them, and they go, no, I'm, "No, I'm not good." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, which can be discouraging yeah. in its own way to students. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, I'm not. If that person is uh-huh. feeling bad, or if that if that mm-hmm. person's bad, then what do, what hope do I have? You know? Yeah. Gotta get better at saying thank you instead of mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. people That's worried so about the expectations. So like, if you think I'm good, then I have to live up to that crap. Are you kidding? Like, yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like uh, it's it's hard. Part of the reason I'm doing this as well is like to humanize the people that are on this thing because mm-hmm. I feel like a lot mm-hmm. of people don't have a a way to talk in a long format way and like be honest about like sometimes you get sad. You know, it's, it's okay to be sad sometimes, you know, yeah. no matter if you're, you know, directors or artists or, mm-hmm. you know, character mm-hmm. designers or whatever, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, um, once you get to the job, it's not like your life is going to be sunshine and roses all the time, you know? It's a job. That's yeah, a job. It it's a job. crafting job and it's a professional job where you're going to be working on, like, honing your skill set. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it is a job and it should be treated as that, a professional. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And. Like, a question I ask everybody, right, like, would you be doing exactly the same thing you're doing right now if you had a billion dollars? Yes. You know? And I think the yeah. answer is yes, and you're probably doing And it's like, could I pay you money to stop drawing? I would do more no, if I could. had a billion dollars. How about you? I would fund my Superman machine. Yeah. <laughs> nice. But the thing is, again, the project I'm working on yeah. is so fun, and I love the people on it so much that I would even wait until this project is finished yeah. to even do that, right? Um, and I... Yeah. Well, and I think mm-hmm. that, that's the right sign is like, if you would be doing everything that you're doing right now, if you had unlimited money, mm-hmm. it's like, why do you need the money? You know, it's like the money just yeah. would serve, you know, enable you to do what you're doing right now. It's I just like, want to keep my lizard brain busy. So yeah, exactly. And yeah. that's, um, yeah. and that's what I'm able to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think that's all. <laughs> and I, I think there is meaning in what we're doing too, just in a wider sense. And we're very lucky in that because, um, uh, yeah, the whole adult animation thing is, you know, growing up, I didn't think I could draw anime boys for a living, and I got a job character designing on an anime style show. Yeah. Like, who would have ever thought that would even be a thing? But now it's even more of a thing than ever because mm-hmm. our shows have been pretty successful. Thank goodness. Well, I think it, it starts out with like you know, if you if you kept feeding that thought of I can't draw anime boys, then that becomes true. It's like mm. I can. Then you're robbing the world of more animo- anime boys. People, <laughs> people find meaning from that. You know? People do find meaning from it. People really latch on to, you know, a character that I might have done a model sheet of and don't think about really anymore. And people, yeah, yeah. you know, comfort characters, I understand that. I love Superman so much. <laughs> well, and, and it's like, you know, the 16-year-old version of yourself living mm-hmm. right now might look at your art and be like, oh, I'm so, I would love to draw what she draws. Yeah. The fact she, that she's able to draw anime boys, mm-hmm. make a living off of it and mm-hmm. have this meaningful life. I think that that's like, in a spiritual sense, like finding meaning. Mm-hmm. It's like you make the world richer for people that might not be able to find meaning in other places of their lives. You know? mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be profound to be worth something. Yeah. 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 I think, again, absolutely. anything that occupies my lizard brain at this point yeah, yeah. is worthwhile. Yeah, absolutely. And if it can be worthwhile and occupy other people's lizard brains, that's great, too. I, and I um, think uh, not mm-hmm. judging your lizard brain is really important. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. um, I, I really don't think you can help what you value in terms of, like, mm-hmm. um, like you know where you're born who your parents are mm-hmm. genetics all play a role and, like just things you can't like mm-hmm. 90% of what you care about might just be completely out of your control you know mm-hmm. um, and uh, well, like, I mean you're never really fully in quote unquote control of your life until like 18 
Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't drink alcohol. You could join the military, right? You can do a lot of stuff, <laughs> like, illegally, but, but like... You can't drink alcohol until you're 21. Yeah. But, um, and, I, yeah, I mean, you're not even... Tr- yeah, you're not even trusted for the first 18 years of your mm-hmm. life to go and, you know, rent a car or anything. You know? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And, um, like, I, again, I, like, I, I could not... Like, I was working in a studio, and I was, like, living a physically comfortable life and I could not stop thinking about living in a van no matter oh, yeah. how hard I tried I was like I mm-hmm. have to do this you know and again there's something about like the occupying of the lizard brain that was mm-hmm. done accomplished <laughs> by doing this you know that I couldn't have had you been exposed but, to that beforehand the, the like like living out of a van um, I lived in a Toyota Camry for about two months mm-hmm. uh, when I, I did another road trip in 2019 mm-hmm. I drove to LA and it was kind of like uh adventurous almost yeah yeah just meeting people i saw katie yeah. I, yeah, yeah i actually went to powerhouse i visited oh yeah i might have met you oh, sure. oh maybe yeah yeah was probably, it wearing a skirt a couple years ago i don't know i don't remember <laughs> he wears kill sword we're, yeah. we're killed too yeah, he's, pretty he's awesome a kill guy. Nice. it's been a while i wish you were wearing one right now I could re- it's record it. balmy and balmy? those things are wool <laughs> okay yeah, yeah, yeah. is this yeah. is this uncomfortable at all or yeah it's fine okay it's cool. fine sick um but yeah I, I don't know it's uh like um the range of people that can exist is really bizarre. You know, there are people that like find you know, obviously like truck drivers, right? So, mm-hmm. Or like, people who work at gas stations, or people that are farmers, or people that like, you know, uh, just like deliver cattle, you know, for a living. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's like everything else in between. And I, I'm, I'm like a slightly darker note. There are people in Afghanistan being killed right now. You know? mm-hmm. It's like, what do you do about that existentially? I think it's like you guys are doing exactly the right thing at least from my perspective of just like being yourselves you know mm. doing the mm-hmm. things that you find meaningful you know um yeah, yeah. i think there's a aspect of knowing what's what's within your direct control yeah and then what's not within your direct control and then what you do have the potential to influence yeah so. what you can do something about mm-hmm. i feel like i mean it's it's easy to get into a negative mindset where you're like Oh, people are suffering all over the world. I should give up everything I have in order to help them. You know? mm-hmm. I should give up my art in order to go feed the poor, or mm-hmm. I should, you know, mm-hmm. try and cure malaria or something. And mm-hmm. just by doing that, you might again, you might like, you would be robbing the world of your specific meaning because you're trying to like, you know, mm-hmm. like solve these ethical problems, you know, mm-hmm. and that you actually might not be able to contribute to at all, you know. Yeah, there's a part of. Um one comfort of my job is if I draw a crappy a la carte, yeah. like no one dies. Yeah. <laughs> and so I don't even think I could do, you know, something that's that high risk or that like right. being a surgeon or, yeah. Right. Um, or um, I've been listening to uh, and, and reading up about hospice nurses lately. Yeah, like I've geez. just been going on hospice nurse forums right. lately right. just to read about, I don't know. There's something. Mm-hmm. Okay. People are always rough, talking about, man you know, children, but I, I don't know. I think the compassion of a hospice nurse is... It gets tested, that's for it's sure. Immense. It's, it's pretty immense. It's pretty incredible. I, mean, I couldn't imagine. You know? And they're not yeah. paid that much money either. No. So I... I talk about people who are underpaid. Yeah, yeah. But Teachers I don't think I too. could do that. I don't think I have the brain power to do that. But maybe that hospice nurse goes home and <laughs> watches the show or maybe they just like yeah, my yeah. maybe they just their brain lights up for five seconds when they see a sketch I post well, that's, you know, that, that's probably whatever. happened right yeah. that's actually probably happened what, like people have watched your TV shows after coming home from a hard day at work you know? yeah. I think that is meaningful there's other forms of activism as well you know if you mm-hmm. feel strongly about something and you see that like oh hey they're uh, uh, either like you know there's a political action c- committee or something that's like putting together a bill that it's the more time off and more money and mm-hmm. it's like that kind of stuff can be very helpful yeah, yeah. some unions in LA are, are, are persisting right now they're mm-hmm. on, they're on what? the film industry yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. oh it's so like I- 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 yeah right yeah right um mm-hmm. yeah, yeah those people striking all over the place because of that mm-hmm. um well and even just leading by example too it's like you're a woman in entertainment which mm-hmm. is rarer than a man in entertainment especially I guess I don't know much about animation but it's a. It's still pretty much a boys' club. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I think um, the higher you go, the more it's a boys' club. Right. But um, Powerhouse, luckily, right. has you know. I feel like what is it? Fifty-fifty. I think we're about there. We made a concerted effort for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I don't want to be hired because of that. I want to be hired because I can draw better than whoever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, um, but that's the thing, right? But, it's like it's like that's not the only reason you hire. Like no. that's, that's the thing a lot of yeah, people yeah. do. Like, oh, affirmative action. Like you're hiring women. It's like no, there's plenty of qualified right. mm-hmm. artists who are women that we can hire. Yeah. The issue has always been that it's always skewed more. Yeah, towards guys. Or, or people will hire who they know. Or mm-hmm. um, yeah, like a lot of it is connections. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I can add a little something to that, like as a as a guy uh, working at Paris, I joined there when it was like twenty four people. It was mm-hmm. mostly dudes, mm-hmm. um, and like those Smash Brothers parties were so much more competitive, and like mm-hmm. there was this constant air of that like masculine like, yeah, yeah. I'm stronger than you are, <laughs> and like we started getting well, you know when I wanted, moved on to like say Samanos with that like much more women were on the board crew, and like I was in that room and people are like talking about how they feel more and like i'm not saying like that's like a it's not like a men versus women thing but like i found that myself just by being in, in an environment like that like became a better mm-hmm. person yeah, yeah. oh you know what's <laughs> funny that toxic masculinity i love that shit it's like no, yeah. you think you're better than yeah. me yeah. Yeah. yeah that's awesome well i know yeah. yeah i don't know we're trying we're trying to get more uh uh weightlifting lingo i know yeah so i'm trying okay i love okay listen i love bodybuilding okay not bodybuilding i don't bodybuild but i like weightlifting because everything about weightlifting is like it's like you didn't fail a set if you went down weight that's a drop set or like Mm -hmm. you know you can't lift this much this week that's a deload week it's like every it's so good (laughs) there's nothing it's not like it's not a failure week yeah yeah. you know it's not a failure set right you go to failure but that's a good thing yeah yeah, absolutely you're trying to make your muscles weak yeah Yeah. you're you're, you're meant to fail yeah so if i screw up a drawing it's like a drop set yeah yeah (laughs) well i feel like i I mean the stereotype for like gym bros is that they're douchebags but generally gym people are the most friendly and encouraging people yeah i met. met a lot of really really mm-hmm. good gym bros um i actually go to the gym um with some co-workers and nice nice i love the peer pressure again yeah yeah so. yeah there's but a although oh, it does suck going to the gym with guys though because you'll be i went to the gym with sean mm-hmm. once and i was like doing the best i've ever done on like the the pull row thing uh-huh. but, and then um, Sean gets on the seat because we swap, yeah. swap, and he just goes, what? And it's oh, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, whatever. Yeah, yeah, jeez. <laughs> I guess that's the one area I can't compete. Yeah. With yeah. The dudes. Dang it. Yeah. Could take steroids. I don't know. What I is, uh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe talk to Julie. I think Julie used to do that stuff pretty. Really? Yeah, I think she's pretty strong. I think Chance's sister, like, I think I remember hearing Chance's sister did dub lifting and got, like, just a ridiculous number on the line. Yeah. So I think it's possible. But again, yeah. what do you want to devote your life to? What do you want to occupy your lizard? How much protein stuff? do you want to How eat today? <laughs> I don't. Dude, I'm struggling. I'm at 60 grams today and I'm like, I don't want to eat another egg. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, the amount of food you have to eat as a, as somebody who lifts weights is insane. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember I was looking at uh, the rocks uh, diet oh, it makes like sick. I don't. Yeah, I can. Twelve thousand calories a day, and then. Well, there's like, like those videos of those guys like on the airplane going to like a weightlifting championship, and they've got bags of spinach they're just shoving oh, yeah, into their yeah. mouth. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's like I don't know. It, there is a price to pay for all that stuff, you know, mm-hmm. and it is pretty intense. Mm-hmm. And the, the end result is awesome. Like I'd love to be a super buff, you know. Just, you got to maintain it though. It's not like yeah, you yeah. can just do that and then quit the life. Well, yeah. it, 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 you might lose it after like a month. Mm-hmm. You. A lot of my injury stories too. Like that's yeah, something you, you don't see a lot. You can't keep going up and wait. Oh yeah. yeah. Did you a ever, lot of the time. Did you ever hear injury. about Yoni's thing? Did, did you ever did he, Yoni? Did he hurt his tendon? His yeah, like leg he, tendon or something? So what there, happened? Well, there's this model at uh, the Watts Atelier. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And he was really doing bi- he, super buff guy. Mm-hmm. One of the buffs models ever. Mm-hmm. Seen. He's doing a bicep curl mm-hmm. and the tendon broke. Stop and and yes. it went like. Whoosh. I think mm-hmm. Eric told us about this. Yeah, I'm not gonna watch that. And there's and then. My YouTube recommendations were awful. Yeah, yeah, right. Completely yeah. insane. Um, but yeah, I, I, I guess I guess the reason I brought that up in the first place was that, like, just by you, you know, living your life and um, like doing the things you like doing, you're like leading. You're, you're an example to people that might want to do the things that you want to do. You're like inspiring people to, you know, maybe mm-hmm. work in. Inter- like feel more comfortable working in animation that might have not mm-hmm. felt comfortable otherwise you know mm-hmm. which is like ethically like that's amazing you know you're doing a lot of good for a lot of people you know mm-hmm. you should always set a good example yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you want it to be more yeah, yeah. open you want to get more interesting opinions and yeah 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 trying to make um, as healthy of an environment we want animation to be interesting too we want more stories mm-hmm. yeah 
God, I was just... Um, yeah, more art styles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. People need to watch more, like, porn films and animation. <laughs> yeah. Just, I don't know, like, I, I, it was... I think it was something even... It was Swedish or something. But I just came across this video, and it was about, like, a group of druids. And it was all these guys, like, competing to be, like, the best druid. And, like, all the different, like potions they would make and like yeah. the story structure wasn't three act and like all right. the characters weren't your tropes and I was like oh like I got so many ideas just from seeing something that wasn't right. standard kind of American media yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, which isn't to say there's not like a lot of great variety here too but like there is definitely a saturation oh, of very superhero stuff yeah yeah it's, yeah. it's fun yeah. seeing I don't know like Fantastic Planet or yeah. something that Oh, yeah. Oh, God, Fantastic Planet. Yeah. That's what I thought you were talking about with the Druids, but you'll have to send me whatever you were watching. Yeah. I'll see if I can can send it your way. Okay. Yeah. Um, Um, Yeah, well, I think it's, uh, I mean, creativity is everything from, like, you know, like splatter paintings by Jackson Pollock to furry porn, you know? mm -hmm. They're all, like, valid in their own ways, you know? (laughs) You make the same amount of money. Or more for a furry part, you know. It's like, yeah, yeah. Not uh, quite, not quite. Yeah, I'll suffer a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> are, are there NFTs for furry porn? I, I'm sure there are. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how much NFT dollar worths are actually real. Though. Yeah. I, I think it's inflated for sure. Yeah. But I, at least the perceived. They sell for about the same reasons mm-hmm. though, which is mainly money laundering. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, Pollux and Bollocks. Yeah. Pollux and Bollocks. I've never heard that. That's good. Um, God, I, this is somewhat tangents but do you know who Cool Cat is? No. Derek Savage? Okay. Oh he's, maybe I, I, I if they're an artist he's a right guy in Las art. Vegas and he made these Cool Cat children's videos of a dude in the giant orange cat costume and he's like I love kids yeah. and it's I like the most <laughs> bargain bin cheap stuff and he's like the biggest <laughs> sleazebag and he just released Cool Cat weed NFTs <laughs> And it's like just flags of like a weed leaf, but yeah. it'll be like this, and it'll be like a rainbow. And he's like gay weed, and yeah. then he'll be like space weed, and it's got like an Who's alien on it. Who's buying these? Dude, I don't know. They just released them, so I don't know if anyone yet. But well, the, 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 the thing that somebody told me about NFTs, it's like the people that are actually buying them for tons of money. It's like a sixteen-year-old that bought like three hundred million dollars of <laughs> oh, yeah. real estate or for like twelve dollars. Oh yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. A lot of it's really money laundering. Yeah, it's yeah. just like you buy. It's like like why people would buy high art. It's, right. it's you're putting money into something. So that they're not looking into it. Yeah, this is a yeah. controversial podcast. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, we should talk about politics more. And, yeah, uh, don't do NFTs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, I'm trying to think of other controversial things. That, uh, uh, oh, how about this? Uh, is cheesecake a pie or a cake? A cake. Unless it has raspberry filling. Uh, it's a pie. Really? Yeah. It's uh, called well, cheesecake. Yeah. Yes. I'm trying to think of like... Well, does it have a pie. crust? A well, pie has the, a filling. The, well, the top, right? The, the the lid of a pie makes that a pie, right? No. No way. Well, does it have a crust? Um, does cheesecake have a crust? It does. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, does? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounded pretty structurally like a pie. No, well, there's uh, no top. There's no filling. Um, but not all pies have tops. Key lime pie doesn't have a top. This pumpkin pie? <laughs> <laughs> a pumpkin <laughs> pie, pie is very similar to a cheesecake, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, I, I, so, so there, it, it is kind of a true question. Uh, the oh, yeah? third option is a tart, which I think is a, a correct. Tart. tart has to be small. Oh, does it? Yeah. Okay. That's true, yeah. yeah. You can't have world's biggest tart, no such thing. <laughs> well, so what if it's a really small cheesecake? Is that... It's a cheese tart. It's called a mini cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's I've very, seen British very right? <laughs> Yeah, I feel like tarts, there's a, like, you know Blackjack, how you're trying to get to 21, but if you go past 21, that's like tarts. If you get mm-hmm. past a certain millimeter, it's no longer a tart. Okay, but... Uh, so I don't know what that millimeter is. You can have is. really tiny yeah, yeah. tarts. <laughs> you should yeah, find can, out what that you millimeter can, is. You can have tarts that are infinitesimally small, but you cannot go past a certain size. Okay, cool. Um, Mary Berry, back me up. <laughs> Mary Berry, okay. Uh, well, I, I, but but the contents of a cheesecake remain the same, but it becomes a tart once it gets... Yeah, it'd be a cheesecake tart. Right. A cheese tart. No, no, no. A small cheesecake is a mini cheesecake. Just mini... Okay. Cause, oh, yeah, because tarts are... Tarts what? have to have custard. That's okay. true. Or yeah. fruit, or not cheesecake. Yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, I think I think it might qualify. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. It <laughs> might qualify. Well, you're you're as a very pie matter of fact. It yeah. um, might qualify it. That's hard to say. Yeah, yeah. Because it's also very tall. It doesn't even really have the typical pie shape, does it? No. It's like a cake shape. Uh, a cheesecake? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of tall. Well, well, but it can have frosting, right? I mean, or, or, like, or like an Oreo. Oh, God. Frosting on a cheesecake <laughs> sounds like the worst. <laughs> I, yeah, I, don't know. I don't know. But, I mean, um, I've seen Oreo crust cheesecakes, but... 
I, I guess mm. I can have like an Oreo topping, but I don't know if that. No, so. the cakes and pies can both have toppings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I have a follow up question. Oh, um, God. Can you make one hand go this way and then the other one go this way? So. Oh, like this? Yeah, yeah. Like one away from mm-hmm. you and then one towards you. Like this? Wait. Wait, so. Like so? Wait, so. It, I think it helps if you close your eyes. Yes. I don't know if I can. I don't, no, know if I'm I don't think my brain works that yeah. way. Well, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things. It's like, you know, doing this. Yeah, thing. I can do that. I can't do the other one. Wait, I, I think I can. I can do it with one. Yeah. I'm very one hand dominant. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> this one's completely useless. It does hockey's and that's it. Okay. Yeah. I also have a hockey hand. Mm-hmm. Um, this one gets carpal tunnel way more than this one does. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, I have a tiny pinky. Oh, oh, that's right, yeah. It is a very tiny pinky. Tiny. Oh. Oh, baby pinky. And now the world knows about world your tiny knows. pinky. This is why I wasn't a concert penis. Nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I was taking lessons, and she. it's also very weak because the joint is way back here. Oh, oh yeah. It's like skin. But wow. Yeah, so it's not very strong. Crazy. That's why I'm not a concert penis or an Olympic weightlifter. Is, is that the hockey hand? Yes. Okay, cool. Do you need, a, oh, for the grip for Olympic weightlifting? Yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, I don't know. I don't know either. Okay. There's probably three lifted, uh, three fingered weightlifters out there who are like laughing at me. <laughs> there are three fingered uh, climbers, like yeah. the, uh, professional climbers. Somewhere on Mount Everest, there's yeah. like a pinky left. I guess I don't need yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Did you know that Sean <laughs> well, was born uh, with an extra pinky? That's cool. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Is it still there? He's a background artist. No, he he had it removed. Okay. Mm-hmm. Did he get put on the other hand? He's really yeah. yeah he's, he's kind of sore about it. He's like, that was my special pinky. <laughs> well, did, was it removed when he was a kid? Or? Yeah. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Sorry for sharing your medical history. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I can make my arm pop. Oh joy! Yeah, I can do both. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, it's not good. Um, now, now you have to share a weird. Uh, uh, I've uh, I don't know. I've got. I almost lost those eyeball ones. Oh how how? Oh. how? Raisin factory? No, uh, I I did injure myself at the raisin factory, oh. but that's because I was being stupid and I was oh. walking on a guardrail and I fell off and landed and I popped my pelvis through my skin. Jeez! <laughs> yeah, it, I hit the ground did so hard. Did it pop out? Yeah, well, like like oh, the bone cut God. through from the inside. Oh God! Oh jeez, that's brutal. Sharp but, pelvis. Uh, this one was. Um, so, uh, you know, golf they use like uh, yeah. graphite shafts a lot right. of times. Dad used to golf a lot. He'd break clubs every now and then. And I had a, uh, so, and I was, like, maybe 13. I was like, I want to play swords uh, when my dad leaves. So he, like, left the golf club broken in the garage, and he left. And I told my sister, I was like, hey, let's go outside and play swords. I yeah. got a golf club. Oh, and, like, oh, the no. club had broken off, yeah. right? So it had, like, this sharp, like, because it shatters, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's very sharp. Um, and then I was like, all right, well, to get out of the garage, I have to hit the button, and then we both run underneath and right. get out the other side. And I hit the button, and she goes underneath, and then I go underneath, but on the way through it, the door smacked me in the back of my head and shoved my head down oh, geez. on the graphite oh, shaft. Geez. Do you have a scar? Or anything? Uh, I don't know if I do anymore, yeah, yeah. but it hit me right there right. and it shoved my head back and I yanked it out um, and Lucky. like it missed my eye by like that much. I think I got like three or four stitches in there. I'm glad you're okay. Yeah, it was really cool because like the, the weeks after that, I was going go to school, I had like sunglasses on because <laughs> yeah. it stitched oh, up and I had okay. the big black eye right, and like right. the security guard is like, you can't or sunglasses in here. I was like, I have an eye condition. Yeah. And he's like, I don't believe you. And yeah. I'd show him and go, Oh my oh, God. Geez, you know, yeah. like, oh, the whole white of my eye was ru- was red from like yeah. the blood that I got into it. Yeah, and, like, yeah. You show your friend, you want to see something gross? And, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, man, yeah. 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 Check this out, man. That is, that That's is awesome. a fun part of our job that I think is. Yeah. <laughs> and graphite chefs? No, gore, <laughs> looking up gore. Oh for, yeah. For well, drawing. So when Here's I was, a tip. Sorry, go ahead. Then, uh, yeah, Here's a tip. To... Look up gore props. Look up decapitated head prop. And then that way, even if it is a decapitated head, you, your brain is like, it's a prop. It's a movie prop. It's fine. Yeah, so props is an important keyword there. Props. It'll save you a lot of uh, um, brain, trauma. Yeah. Well, that, that was something I was thinking about when I was like trying to pursue working in games where it's like you're looking at horrible shit all the time and it just becomes like and you're trying depending to, on the game you're working on, on game. Like, that's mm-hmm. hopefully not for like Crash Bandicoot or like there's a yeah. war I guess is definitely yeah. 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 oh my god you work yeah. in Gears of War no no no, no oh, I, I was, that's a good example yeah, 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 yeah. yeah just cutting people in half and stuff uh-huh. you know it's like oh man I couldn't I, I think looking at that stuff consistently and seeking it out would kind of mess me up a little bit mm-hmm. yeah I, um, I've had to do a number of gore call outs yeah. where you have to like find reference and stuff and I found that at first you're like, oh, shoot. But then your brain is like, I guess maybe the, the, maybe this is how surgeons feel. But 
it's mm -hmm. it's more about the structure of it and making sure that the, it's nice and glossy and, right right and more more about the drawing than it is about yeah yeah so yeah, i found it but um there are there are folks who aren't comfortable with core call outs and, the, and mm -hmm. you never make them right you never make them do it. it's like i'll take it mm -hmm. i'll do awesome. same thing with like uh, there are people who love it yeah yeah same thing like sexy scenes and things like mm -hmm. that right yeah yeah um, you don't want to make people you know it'd be uncomfortable yeah mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and I, I think that's a, a really cool part about being on a team is that, mm -hmm. you know, you guys do support each other emotionally and, mm -hmm. you know, like, I, I mean, you know, you also probably feed into each other's strengths as well. Like, mm -hmm. if you, like you're telling me if you have somebody that really is good at drawing certain kinds of clothing or mm -hmm. period pieces, then you'll give that person, you know, mm -hmm. that kind mm -hmm. of assignment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 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 Playing into your, really cool. your team's strengths is, is really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um. Well, I, I, I guess going back to the Gordon, uh, <laughs> uh, modern day James, I don't know if you know him, he, mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a YouTuber. Um, mm -hmm. He was uh, trying to be a doctor. He was studying to be a doctor for a long time. Wow. And he had cut open cadavers. Mm -hmm. He had done cadaver studies. Ooh. And it's like fucking insane. Mm -hmm. Like the idea of going and actually cutting open a person and studying it is just like my limits animals like I've, I've done yeah. like you know Michigan you do a lot of hunting things like that and like so you're familiar with it even if you don't hunt yeah. and like I've been in science classes uh, and cut open dead animals yeah and that's I my limit I did the fetal pig one yeah. yeah and the smell got to me more than anything to be honest oh the, the formaldehyde is the worst the smell got to me yeah, more than anything yeah, yeah. Um, you know we used to go to Watts okay yeah. this is this is an aside but um, <laughs> so Watts is located at the top of a hill, right? And usually the doors and windows are open because yeah. of all the turpentine and also because it's in Encinitas where the weather's very mild, so you don't really need air conditioning or heating most of the time. So doors, windows are always open, but at the base of the hill is an In-N-Out burger. And so the smell of the onions would whack yeah. up the hill and mix with the turpentine, and oh, I can't eat In-N-Out no. burger anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah. That I can't, I can't, sense. even the smell of it. Yeah. No, thank um, you. I'm sure, yeah. I mean, turpentine and onions is probably one of the most disgusting things I could probably think of. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I can't do it anymore. I'm a Taco Bell girl. Same thing with the raisins. Really? You can't eat raisins? Well, because they would clean the floors. And when you're, do when you're working in a cereal factory, I worked at Ralston Foods. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which is a cereal factory. And they would do, like, raisin bran. And you have to take this. Uh, it's like a little forklift. And you'd take it uh, into this warehouse that had boxes and boxes and boxes crates of raisins like they were going to be the size of this van you yeah. get the forklift and go and raisins themselves don't have much of a smell mm -hmm. right when they're in the hundreds of thousands like that though right. it's the worst What's run like ah uh, cloying like it, it's like like that kind of gasoline thing where it gets into your sinuses and it hurts oh. uh they, they would also like clean those floors like a all very, the time. very sweet wine kind of yeah, but they would also like clean those floors a lot, so you get that mixed with bleach, mm. right? And Ooh, so, yeah, like, that's that's where it is. Yeah. yeah. Do, do, do you guys like cilantro? No, I, I do. Can't stand it. Well, apparently, apparently, genetic. Yeah, do, do tastes like whatever. soap. Yeah, I think it yeah. still tastes kind of like soap, but I like it. I kind of like it too. Yeah, it's a bitter it's flavor. Like it works really good on like you have something super savory, mm -hmm. and you add a little bit of cilantro on there, and it just pulls back just enough. I like yeah. that. Yeah, I go over and he cooks and, and he's like cilantro on the side. Nice. So, thank you, Patrick. <laughs> I, I try um, to be aware of anyone's like dietary restrictions. Yeah, I love kimchi though, and I love um, sauerkraut. Yeah, oh, I yeah. like I like bitter stuff. I just don't like. Um, I I actually dislike like kimchi. Oh yeah, I just mm. don't like it at all. Which I don't know if I've ever had it particularly well made. Oh, I have a favorite brand, um, but they only sell it at Ninety Nine Ranch, so I have to stock up. Yeah. Um, what's the brand name? I don't remember the brand name, but it's like short <laughs> and it's like in a little cube, yeah. and then the, the top is round. Uh, I, I just like it because it's just exactly the right size. Like the bits are this big. Yeah, yeah. So I don't yeah. have to tear it apart. Bite size. Bite size. Yeah. If you had a tub of ice water when this thing was finished burning and you just shoved it in there, I wonder how bad that thing would explode. Oh, I mean, the, I mean, it was boiling alcohol just now. Yeah. So uh, that's not good, right? It's not good. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's like, well, I mean, like that, like temperature shock going from that hot mm -hmm. to that cold. Oh yeah. Like, it, what it, would it, that do? It might break the. This is extremely hot right now. Mm -hmm. um, you can feel it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah don't um, touch that. <laughs> <laughs> I meant like for all of us. So yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's like a general like. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, it's yeah hot. that's super hot. Um, I think it would. It might. It might snap the concrete thing. I want to touch mm -hmm. it. Um, you should. <laughs> Wait, how's it not melting the table? Uh, there's a barrier. I mean, it's warm here, but there's a barrier beneath the, the thing. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. I'm sure this is what people really want to hear us <laughs> talk about. Well, I, I think it, I, <laughs> I, I like talking to people in this way because somebody might look at you guys and be like, you guys aren't people. You're like, you have these big jobs. I would never, like people that have these things I, I want, they mm-hmm. would never joke around. They would never, they're too professional, mm. right? And I think it's like joking about, about kimchi and, you know, just like- well, people get the opposite shit. idea too. They like, they see you and they see that like potential community of artists that they yearn for yeah. mm-hmm. and you'll get people who immediately want to be buddy buddy with you right mm-hmm. um you know too familiar too quickly yeah and you know a lot of times i think we tend to be pretty patient with folks like that mm-hmm. you know because we understand like i'm it's yeah. difficult mm-hmm. um but yeah so you get you get kind of both sides of the spectrum where there's like you are mm-hmm. this professional like ideal for for me how do i mm-hmm. get stuff yeah. How do I get that from you? Like, what can you teach me kind right. of thing in this short amount of time? Um, and then there's also the one of, like, I just want to talk to... Our, is my voice not coming in? Oh, no. Pardon? I'm trying okay. to make sure it's it's lower. Okay. Sorry. Are oh, you yeah, good? Good. Uh, just, uh, hello? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's gone. <laughs> All right. Fine. Uh, I was just saying, um, and then you also get the opposite where people are, like, yeah. they're starved for that artistic community mm-hmm. yeah. um and you usually see it, things like expos that's usually where you get a pretty yeah I've not, I've not done expos but these um these guys have done yeah well okay i have done them but when i was doing conventions myself and selling my own art right um and i was you know never never anyone big but i have had people who come up to you and say like you're my favorite artist i drove all the <laughs> way from this place to just pick up these prints and it's like me <laughs> like <laughs> right, what right. yeah, yeah actually same. at conventions i can count on one hand the time I've gotten any rude or over familiar like yeah um I mean I understand it like I, I my first convention I think I was 15 when right. I met Joe Chen yeah. and like I almost started crying I think I was like pissing or something. I was right. like super emotional I was like <laughs> it's like I got it you know but it was my first convention I was 15 I was yeah. probably be missing um so I guess there's a bit of a like if I see people right. I don't know at conventions see that there's a lot of generosity there like I get it but Absolutely. also as long you know as long as they're not being rude mm-hmm. yeah. or, um, or like overly um, intrusive. And intrusive. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There have been, I, I've seen more of that online. Right. Um, Some of the people there are like still figuring things out to mm-hmm. how to be in a, they're young, mm-hmm. right? They're in their teens, twenties, like for the most part. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, they're just, they're still figuring things out. You'll get, you'll get kids they walk up to you and they'll like want to start off a conversation like, oh yeah, did you see this real piece of shit? And right. you're like, I actually worked on that company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they go like, oh no, oh, and you're oh, like shit. it's fine. Oh, like, yeah. you know, you just gotta like yeah. learning. Bond over having... things that you like. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was telling Katie earlier. I think most people don't need art teachers; they need therapists way more than art. <laughs> yeah, way more. It's like, you know, it's uh, just being okay with yourself and you know, being okay, just like. Um, yeah, just being okay with the people you look up to. You know? mm-hmm. I think that that's like mm-hmm. the ideal scenario, you know. Uh, not like putting them up on a pedestal and not putting them way so far below you or, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, they're just people. Yeah, just human, other human beings, mm-hmm. you know. There's, there's ways, yeah, yeah. Basically, that's it. Like, we're all just people. We're professionals. Uh, we've been working in the industry for a while. So, yes, there are things that we're going to be more uh, adept at addressing. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, absolutely. But it's not like... You know, it's not like Katie doesn't still love Superman. And, I love him so much. You know? <laughs> I've loved Superman for as long as I've known you. Aww. So That's yeah, true. Very awesome. Yeah. And, like, I think also be aware of um, just the kind, how long we've been talking to people. Yeah. A lot of times mm-hmm. when someone's coming up to someone else, they think that, like, they've just been talking for like five minutes and right. I was like no man this has been like 12 hours <laughs> just yeah yeah of people just like saying the same five questions to me right mm. like I don't mean to be short I'm trying to be as pleasant as possible but sometimes it's just difficult so when, you're, when the, you're trying to get somewhere what is the most common question like what is is it just how do I get your job you get like yeah like uh, big questions like how do I get good at art and I'm like yeah. I don't know dude like that's I ask strong, my coworkers <laughs> that too it's like, <laughs> like even even now it's like they have the secret sauce that yeah. I don't have like right. how do they get good at art yeah, you just I, do it. I think yeah. I remember asking Eric that once, yeah. and he was like, "You know how to get good at art, Katie. Just do it." Yeah, yeah. And right. I was like, "You don't have like just put more drawings yeah. where you they don't should have be." A secret. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Well, yeah. What's the brush pen? Or, what's yeah. the brush? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> what brush do you use? Although, okay, there is a brush um, that is that is pretty good. Um, yeah. Chance Kubesh made it. It's on his Twitter. Go download it. It's called Xerox Copy Pencil for Clip oh, Studio Paint. That'll make you of good. Course. That'll make you good at art. That, that'll make yeah. you good. Seriously, I've been doing all my drawings in it. It's great. Yeah. Cool. 
Well, n- now we all know what the retrospect <laughs> <laughs> is. Um, well, and I, I, again, I think it's uh, everyone wants to find that um, uh, you know ex machina for their own lives. You know, it's like how do I become a good artist? What materials do I get? Who do I talk to to get a job? Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of it is just random chance. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, you were telling me you got your job through Twitter, and I, like, I don't know how you got your job, but it's like, you know, knowing a guy. A while ago. No, uh, I commented on a powerhouse YouTube video. Yeah. And I linked to my reel, and they apparently, again, they were like 20 people. They were looking to hire at that time. Yeah. And they said, are you looking for work? I was in Michigan at the time. And I was yeah. like, yeah, I was like, going to be here like next week. And I was like, yeah. Sure. And like, do you know Flash? And I didn't. And I was like, yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. Which I should add, it's not necessarily always good. People get that and they're like, oh, that's how you, yeah, yeah. you know, that's, that's that grind culture thing. But like, yeah. we had someone at, at Powerhouse after me who made that same choice that I did. But the difference was, is I actually did learn Flash. And I, I put a lot of effort into doing that. Mm-hmm. He did not learn his program and so he got hired at powerhouse and then he couldn't do the work and he didn't oh. get any better and yeah. eventually we had to say goodbye because it's like oh. right you're I, not uh, doing the things yeah yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I have a yeah. similar well i was hired to do character design and i didn't do character design because i was at watts yeah. right when right, i was right. doing i was just painting yeah. i was learning you know figure drawing and painting and stuff like that yeah. but i never did character design and but i saw that there was an opening for a character designer and so yeah. I, I was like slips some designs yeah, yeah. Right. and then and then sam gave me you know the prompts for like three main characters right i i ordered a how to design characters book that night yeah, and, yeah. and i watched the matt Rhodes um D I i don't remember what it's called but it, like they do D um right. character sketches for people on youtube yeah and i just listened to a bunch of those and they get till i make it right right they get till i make it but well, also you got to give you it. a lot of uh, line drawings to do after seeing all those paintings yeah right <laughs> i never i never did lines because painting i was like cool i don't know how to draw this soft edges blurred out yeah, put yeah. It in the background right but now it's like what do you mean i have to draw a foot on every model sheet right <laughs> what do you mean i have yeah. to draw back views everything of feet? right yeah and yeah. it has to be one line mm-hmm. so that i think is something that i learned on the job that I never realized before just the absolute good skills to learn. of of anime model sheets. Like, like for real, you want to learn how to draw? Look at anime model sheets. Yeah, yeah, um, um, yeah. Well, and it's uh, so decisive. It's I, again. I think a lot of people get they they have like a checklist of things that they feel like they have to learn to be a professional artist. Mm-hmm. Oh, I have to learn anatomy yeah. perspective, and, and sometimes you even know what you need to learn. Well, mm-hmm. and it's like that's like maybe one part of it, but then there's also like animating, like creating character sheets and designs mm-hmm. that are easy to animate. You know, mm-hmm. which is like has nothing to do with painting at all. You no. Know? Or hell, like, like I'm a director now. Like I'm getting ready to not do hardly any drawing. Yeah. Right. And it's like so you, I got into this position by doing a lot of really cool drawings yeah. and being a good animator. And now they're like, cool, stop all that. <laughs> right. Now I want you to do spreadsheets, organization, talk to clients, and navigate all the personalities of this project. Yeah, it's yeah. like oh, no one told me how to do that. Right. right. Yeah. Now you have to do it. Yeah. 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 So. Um, you never know. Let that be a lesson to everyone who wants to be a director. If you like to draw, you ain't going to be doing a lot of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Same thing with art directors, too. It's a lot, yeah. a lot of emails and, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even, like, supervising for character design, it's a lot of just making sure that the style is consistent. Yeah. Uh, although I have been able to do a lot of designs myself, which is really excellent. But right. um, and there's a lot of spreadsheets. There's a lot of keeping track of stuff. Yeah. And there's a lot of interacting with your team. But it's fine because I love my team. Yeah. My team is... Um, my team is like what makes me want to supervise is just being able to interact with them. It's a good crew. Yeah, people are awesome. I have yeah. a really, really good crew. I love people. Um, yeah. People, yeah. Well, and again, I, that's the very cool part about working in a creative space is you have people that are like, it becomes like a family. Mm-hmm. People you spend mm-hmm. all your time around. Like you're spending more, like if you work at a studio, you're spending more time around the people at your studio than mm-hmm. you are with like, your significant other or family you mm-hmm. know especially if they live states away yeah yeah mm-hmm. absolutely mm-hmm. And it's like they become your family in a sense mm-hmm. yeah sometimes they become like even that close like um you know my best friend i met at the studio and i, I put her on my emergency contacts today yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah yeah, yeah it, that there's a bit of a family there i mean you don't want to be like you know this company is a family it, it's because right. i understand that being a little bit weird a little bit weird or a little bit you know you condescending might, condescending but i think that you know certain crews yeah can become very close absolutely very, you, know. you have a good work environment it can happen naturally mm-hmm. yeah 
Yeah. Usually companies who say, welcome to our family, aren't doing that. Yeah. It's, okay, that, that's, <laughs> that's like the Silicon McDonald's Valley. Is doing it too. The Silicon <laughs> Valley version where it's like. Right. I don't know, mandatory family. Yeah. <laughs> some some mandatory. insurance company in like yeah. middle of Ohio, right, mm-hmm. where they want you to do calls to everybody and sell people insurance. Welcome to our family. Yeah, right. there, right. there is <laughs> like something nonsense. to say, though, about working at a studio where everyone's interests are, are similar. Yeah. Well, not everyone's interests, but there is, there's Venn diagrams where my interest with any given person at the studio will be more than my given interest with any random like person that I run into. Right. So, it's obviously. funny to see how it shifted, too. How? This is funny to see how it shifted to... Oh, to more anime stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. When I was at Powerhouse, that was, like, Sam's thing. Yeah. And then Sam, through his sheer force of will, yeah. he just brought the entire <laughs> studio over to anime. He did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he amazing. did. Um, yeah. Patrick, uh, we have a, a young a young artist who's really, really skilled, but is super into anime, and yeah. they'll <laughs> talk and... I'll be like, watch this anime. And Patrick will be like, I already have watched King of the Hill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're like, ah! Yeah. I torment that, yeah. poor, that poor kid. Yeah. <laughs> Is Avatar Last Airbender an anime? We should ask. Uh, I know what he would say. He would say no, right? I say it doesn't matter. Yeah. I hate yeah. this. I hate this argument. Like, yeah. what's anime? It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. There's doesn't so matter. many, like, things. Like, yeah, watch uh, Tekken King Crete and tell me that's, like, not anime. Yeah. Or, or you know, like watch Castlevania and tell mm-hmm. me that is or is an anime. Like the, the the lines are so blurred, and like you have to get so minute with mm-hmm. the criticisms to like try to actually categorize them. Also, we're working with the same outsource studios. As- That's the other thing. Like, <laughs> it's like the same animators, guys. Yeah. <laughs> like DC superheroes, mm-hmm. and then like uh, flipping like brand new animal or whatever. Like they're all animated in Korea. Or yeah. like, <laughs> the freelancers are the same yeah. too. You know, yeah. a lot of the freelance animators who do a lot of the Sakuka stuff are webcam. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, they all work for Sam now. Well, sometimes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, anyways, occupy your lizard brain, but not with that question. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Castle in the Sky. <laughs> so, yeah. Most people who work in animation don't care about that. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it's, I think, the same thing with art. It's like, mm. and I, um, you know, people like to think that there's this giant feud between, like, DC or Marvel or but no one cares. You know, at least people who work. There's a lot of people who go from one to the other. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. People just also talk about things that produce very similar content. Yeah, yeah. It's right. not that different. Mm-hmm. No, no. It's just different names, essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And stuff. But, Marvel doesn't have Superman. Um, they have a... They have Eddie Brock. I don't know Eddie Brock. It's Venom. Okay. Yeah, he's pretty cool. He's pretty cool. Um, Iron Man's pretty neat, I guess. I like Iron Man, but I like armored suits. Yeah, it's like yeah. My, my thing. Armored suits. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen your art yet. You haven't? No. Oh, no. no. <laughs> I, I made you, like, you know. I'm wearing some of it. <laughs> oh, I've been know. thinking about getting a tattoo, actually. Yeah. Um, I've not been able to commit to one, but I was thinking of something to commemorate the trip. Oh, oh okay. nice. Um, a little getting, van. Yeah, getting a little van, like yeah. a little line drive a van somewhere. For like all the all little places you went to, like mm-hmm. all the way up. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. you know yeah, that board? Cool. Just tattoo that whole board. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah be, be, the, the color ones would be. Yeah. Expensive. That'd be pretty difficult. Kind of painful, probably. Yeah. But the line drawings would be. Easy. Mm-hmm. There's all sorts of things you can do for it. Yeah, yeah. That'd be pretty sick. You could get, uh, you could make a band like that on your wrist, and then the flames could go up there. Yeah, yeah. That'd be mm-hmm. fun. Yeah, yeah. Right. Something like that. Or you could just get your toilet box <laughs> on one of your arms. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I have to use it before I get it tattooed on my body. Mm. Mm. I should probably get it. I should chin it once before. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna see how long we've been going for. How we doing? We've been going for about one hour and six minutes. Oh, that's okay. not so bad. Nice. Um, do you guys want to keep talking, or would you like to? I'm whatever. I'm I'm kind of an easy go going guy. Yeah. Uh, well, I used to make that joke all the time when I lived behind the studio. Really? Yeah, because I usually be was like powerhouse was right there, and then I literally there's that fence, and my place was on the other side of the fence. I was neighbors oh, okay. with the studio, and I'm like, oh god, guys, the commute today, like every day. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, uh, Shut up, Patrick. That would suck if I had, like, if I was stuck in traffic that day. But um, well, I, I think yeah. commuting is the worst thing. Actually, yeah. I think it's actually one of the worst things on the planet. Like, it's you not imagine? great. It's not great. Okay. Yeah, like, I try to live. I try to minimize it as much as possible. Austin's not not getting any funner in that yeah. regard. No, I mean, you yeah. can't go to work earlier because then you'll be stuck in traffic on the way there and the way back. Well, mm-hmm. you, you guys have been working remotely. Yes, right? so we have. Yeah, yeah. but I remember. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> um, I would have days where it's like I'll be at the office at nine. And I'll yeah. go home at five, and it'll be great. Yeah. And then it's like I'm in traffic for forty five minutes on the way there, forty five minutes on the way back. When yeah. My drive is usually eight minutes. Right. Yeah. So. Seriously. 
My drive to the office is eight minutes, and then my drive back is like twenty minutes. And it adds just a bunch minutes. of yeah during Crazy. traffic days. That's insane. Um, that's ludicrous. Mm-hmm. Well, awesome. Well, it doesn't I, add forty-five minutes. It adds like thirty. Okay. Yeah, I guess I live in LA, so I shouldn't be surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah LA's got a way worse. You, like, I, 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 I don't know. I guess I, I, I. We still have days when the when there's light traffic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But it is. It's getting worse, right? Austin's a city that didn't want to grow, so they didn't really invest it. Uh, kind of. <laughs> My butt's hanging off. Let's get you right. in. How about now? <laughs> there you go. Okay. Are you uh, hanging off? Uh, no, I'm hitting things though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to knock things over. Uh, hopefully, you're still in the frame. But yeah. Here. How are uh, we doing? Yeah, yeah. I, I think we're probably okay. Okay. All right. Uh, if not, then whatever. But yeah, you know, I um, I don't know. I, I really believe that quality of life when it comes to uh, young adults. Uh-huh. I, I don't think it matters what you're doing. It matters how short your commute is. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm sure. Like again, Power House is awesome and everything. But if you had to commute for two two hours there and back so four hours collectively no i wouldn't do it if someone gave me one billion (laughs) dollars but i had to commute two hours every single day every day no you wouldn't do it not even for two billion dollars yeah yeah dude i used to do it for about double h yeah not two hours i think it was 45 minutes average there and then 45 minutes back okay well this is assuming that i you know yeah um and that I don't need to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think anyone needs two billion dollars. That's true. That's I don't true. think anyone needs two billion dollars. Two billion dollars does sound quite fun, though. That's, mm-hmm. that's I suppose. But, I think at some point it just doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, I, I think after a hundred million dollars, mm-hmm. doesn't matter. I think after ten million dollars, the utility in your life. Can't even fathom that amount of money. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. What do you do with that? You know, it's like I don't know. Buy countries. I know. You know, more people need to invest in their really ridiculous. I don't know. OCs or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, make, you know, just, yeah. It'd be like, here's, I'm funding my show. Mm-hmm. Here's my OCs. I'm going to get another battery from the front for the okay. camera. Okay. Uh, do you guys want to entertain the sure. the people while I do that? Uh, what do people want to know? Um, what do people want to know? You can debate the pie, the pie question more. No, I can't revisit That's that. That's fine. Uh, uh, I don't know. What Have you been doing any more leather work? Um, yeah, I made a wallet for Sean. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, Sean gave me the easiest commission. He I should have worn your bands. Oh, yeah. I got the tiny ones, too. No, what is this? Commercial bullshit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I do leather craft sometimes. But, this um, is true. Sean just wanted a wallet that was um, just had one pocket on each side, like not even a, a bill. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that was one of, it was very easy. I watched. I made it in a day, and I watched the third season of You. <laughs> which um i have thoughts on uh i don't think i know you it's the show about the um he's like a stalker guy okay so you know all those you know teen romance things where it's like edward cullen watched her sleep because he loved her so much and like, he's so obsessed with her That's so gross. But, okay it takes that to the most like okay here's what this guy would actually be like oh god so he, oh he's it's like, like, I'm like a so, horror movie yeah he's like oh i'm so in love with you and I'm, i want to protect you and mm-hmm. um and this collects you know breaks into her house to find out what her friends are like and kills her friends because he thinks they're bad for her and anyways this is a bunch of you spoilers but he collects a tampon at one point uh, and then you just like ooh. yeah but the third season i, I like the first season the best sexy second season was pretty good Third season, there was just so much going on, and I was working at the time, and I looked down, and it's like, another body, another body. <laughs> I, I couldn't keep track of it. I have very bad watching comprehension. Like, I, I'm not very good at watching shows, which is weird, because I work on shows. <laughs> it's, I'm the same. Mm-hmm. I fill it with either video games or other things, like uh, drawing for myself mm-hmm. or cooking and things like that. I need to get more groceries. Well, oh, yeah. I, I, I'm not in the shot right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> People can assume where I am. We're talking to a ghost right now. Yeah. Uh, I, I was thinking about, like, do people who play StarCraft, are they as good as people who are, like... Playing? They don't have to be, no. Well, it, it, but, but it's, like, um, obviously... Oh, you mean, like, like the play testers, like, like uh, or, like, the people who are, like, they have oh. to constantly turn it on and try out? No, definitely not. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because yeah, people whose job is to make games isn't to play games. You know, pro gamer is a whole thing. I yeah, did yeah. pour a lot of time mm-hmm. too. I went through a phase where I was like, I'm gonna get so good at Overwatch, and then I realized you had to like study and mm-hmm. practice and like take videos of yourself playing. It's and a full time gig. I I was like, I don't want to be that good at Overwatch, so I'm stuck in um, platinum. But that's okay. Oh man, 
Yeah, it's a different skill set to make yeah. something that will be good for people to play mm -hmm. than it is to actually be good at playing it. Yeah. Um, and I think it's... It might be the same for watching. I don't know. I think that people at our studio have a really good ability to watch and analyze stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a weird experience being in the field like because you experience media differently mm -hmm. and it, sometimes it comes with some there's some lows where mm -hmm. you're like okay i know how all this is done i know what to expect all mm -hmm. the cliches are obvious to me whereas like my friend who doesn't do that like he's, he's enamored by all mm -hmm. of it but then on the flip side if something does like uh, uh, uh you're more uh, impressed by it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. um i watch shows a lot of the times with my um i'm friends with a lot of the admin staff at Powerhouse and we'll watch shows together and, and, and whenever they watch animated things they'll, they'll be like Gradient Pop yeah. you know Targa Targa not of Finding the Edge See there's the like there's another the thing too where yeah. there'll be a um, like a bit of a blur on a background and so the, the very last pixel of the frame will be like lighter or slightly blurred and it's mm -hmm. like I can't watch this with you anymore yeah. you watch like watch like Adventure <laughs> Brothers my, oh yeah I had a um, one of them actually came over and she adjusted my TV because she the was color like settings? she adjusted the color settings <laughs> and the auto smoothing on my TV because she's like I can't watch oh auto smoothing she, yeah I, I didn't know I had auto smoothing on my TV and she was like no. Katie I can't like it, it, ruined, can't it, it makes a difference yeah. right? it makes a bad difference I don't know I can't. I, I couldn't I can't, tell. I can't know when she yeah. fixed it. I couldn't tell, but yeah. for a while she wouldn't watch TV at my place because yeah. she couldn't figure out how to get right. the auto smoothing off. But she she knows more about my TV than I do. So whenever I need help, she'll be like, "Hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, can you, can <laughs> can you help me out?" I feel like the like sixty FPS thing is one of those things too. It's like I can't tell the difference. I can't tell the difference either. I can, and it drives me up the damn wall. I wonder if it's like a, I don't I, I don't know if you can train yourself to see it or if it's just something that like. Maybe. I mean, I'm used to looking at things for mm -hmm. that motion. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I can catch out subtleties. Right. 60 FPS comes off, like, it exposes a lot of the uh, the magic. It kind of dispels a lot of the magic. Right. You watch, yeah. like, when the Hobbit movies came out, um, not saying those are particularly magical, uh, but, like, when they came out, they came out in 60 FPS, and I watched both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in the 60 FPS thing, things like, you know, they wore, like, Hobbits wear, uh, the actors wear these, like, silicone feet yeah. well in 24 yeah. fps or whatever it is 30 whatever live action is like it's 30 yeah um it was fine you didn't notice it but in 60 fps you catch the little jiggle oh, that yeah. wasn't like a foot <gasps> would do every time it oh. hit the ground oh, and like nice. all the little silicone things in their yeah, face yeah. Right. the all little subtleties came through oh, and right. suddenly it was like oh, i can God, tell everyone's in makeup it. yeah yeah and like oh. yeah right so so in that case it was bad Right. Yeah. In that case, it was bad, and I would yeah. be someone who is a professional animator would struggle watching something. So, yeah. with that said, good for games. I think Adam, my co-director, was really for it, and he might still be. Yeah. And I remember me and Meg being like, "How? How can really? it be for this for animation too? Like hand drawn animation? No, I don't think. No, 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 not like no. More about like like this looks good. Oh, okay. Then right. we should be animating it. We've well, gotten we that question. You can't animate yeah. 60 yeah. FPS. The animation didn't really ever happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. It would like triple the cost or more, right? Well, we just wouldn't. I mean, same our, thing with 4K. It's yeah. just it like, would just take so much time, and also you right. don't get anything out of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's not. Uh, the only time I've been able to tell the difference is when you pause it on a frame where it's like, right. like blurred mm -hmm. and. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it, again, I mean, again, going back to the, like, animation or working in film it's not necessarily as sexy as people think it might be there's tons mm -hmm. of like little things that you might not consider or, like you know reanimating hands or something mm -hmm. or i'm um, worrying about frame rates and um it's a lot of politics at the upper echelon of things yeah, with, yeah. like mm -hmm. you know tons of money being thrown around so. that's the thing yeah anytime you're on something where there's millions of dollars at stake mm -hmm. you're gonna get some opinions on how to use that yeah <laughs> whether they work for your studio or not <laughs> right. yeah yeah or just also fans as well mm -hmm. yeah um yeah again i and it all comes back to like it totally being worth it you know mm -hmm. absolutely worth all the struggle and all the tedium mm -hmm. that goes mm -hmm. along with you know doing that sort of stuff yeah um, if you think it is yeah 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 um, yeah i think it's up to each person um, mm -hmm. yeah um we've been going for let's see i'm getting tired uh one hour and 17 minutes uh, I think I am. I think I'm running out of steam. Ah, fair okay. enough. Um, is there anything... How should people follow you on the internet? And I also think these batteries are dying. Oh, oh fair okay. enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm at uh, Patrick Stannard. Yeah. My last name is S-T-A-N-N-A-R-D. Cool. Patrick Stannard at Twitter. Nice. 
Um, That's the main thing. You can see my Superman thirst tweets at, at um, I don't know how to pronounce my name, but K L O Y S I U S on like Twitter and Instagram. Nice. Um, Did you have an origin story for your name? Yes. Um, I was watching Brideshead Revisited, and there's a character named Sebastian, and Sebastian has a bear named Aloysius. And I was like, Katie, my name, and Aloysius. <laughs> so maybe it's pronounced Caloysius. I don't know. Yeah, that's pretty good. I, I know it's like Colossius or something. That's what everyone says, like cloister, like the yeah, yeah. like the Pokemon. Yeah. Is that a Pokemon? I think so. It's okay. a museum in New York City. Cloister. Why wouldn't it be a Pokemon? Yeah, my brother would go there all the time, so I do Cloistia's know about those cool. places. Yeah, 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 it's really pretty. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. <laughs> Okay, cool. Well, thank you for joining. Yeah, mm-hmm. thanks for bringing your van over here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, I guess we'll get it there. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. All right. Huzzah. Sick. Oh, my God. How do I get out of here? Yeah, sorry. It's so claustrophobic. Could I oh. ask you...